when you hear something like that, you know, the, the power of that drum kind of uh, overcomes you and you realize that you're in a very special moment, you know, and there's a lot of power, spiritual. And then it uh, wasn't shortly after that a woman by the name of uh, Moves Camp. She got up and uh, she said, you know, she said, I'm tired of uh, my brothers dying of uh, alcoholism. I'm tired of my nephews coming home and they got an alcohol problem. I'm tired of my conditions of my family when I try to get water or help from the tribal government. She says, uh, nobody wants to help. But yeah, we hear about all these funds, we hear about all these programs. She said, whatever happened to the spirit of Crazy Horse? She said, is he gone now or does he still live here amongst us? Man, it was like a shock wave went through, you know. Especially us as young people, uh, a South Vietnam veteran, you're thinking, oh man, you know. You, Let's go, you know. Kind of start thinking like we got to do something, man. This, this is the the women are asking for help. I mean, anybody with any kind of uh, pride or cultural background or family background, you see, we got to protect the women. Staying up at the Indian boarding school, the Pine Ridge boarding school, uh, or Oglala Community School's official name. They were staying in the dormitories up there. And so different workers in the community started coming out to Calico and telling us. I thought, wow, man, this is kind of like Vietnam, man. All of a sudden we got the public, the people that's working, giving us information about the enemy, you know, what they're doing and what to watch out for. I says, you know, this is this is getting, this is building, you know, something's going to happen. I was thinking in my own mind. And uh, sure enough, you know, the chiefs came back across the road and they said, well, we're going to go to Wounded Knee because at Wounded Knee we won't be alone because... <clears throat> Of what happened in 1890 when our people were massacred by the 7th Cavalry, over 300 men, women, and children. 80% was women and children. Uh, you started thinking of that, what that meant in the history of our people. And the chance to uh, be there with those spirits. And what uh, Alan Moose Camp had said. <clears throat> All those things growing through your mind, man, you, you're ready to run through a wall or kind of get that spirit like when I was back in Vietnam, that survival thing where you're not going to let nobody affect your survival. And the next thing is we've got to get the mission, you know, what's the mission? Like when you start thinking in military terms, you know, because you're, you want to get something done, and the police are there, and the, the lights, and the marshals got their bunkers. And I'm thinking to myself, these guys aren't soldiers, you know, they're police, but they're not soldiers. And sure enough, man, we decided to take off. The chief said we're going to Wounded Knee because we won't be alone. We'll have the spirits of our ancestors. This long caravan, man. It was really dramatic because it was kind of coming down towards dark in the evening. This is in February, so that's fairly early. February 27th, 1973. We're going in and see we're north of Pine Ridge and there's just one highway, so we're going south into Pine Ridge. To get to Wounded Knee, you got to go through Pine Ridge. So we got a caravan, maybe 100 cars or so. Lights on, going over these little hills out in the plains. All the buildings in town are bunkers. The cops are running all over. They're coming, they're coming. There's a hunter. 
we come into Pine Ridge and instead of surround the VIA building, we just make a turn and go out of town. It blew their minds. They didn't know where it was going. They didn't think about the history. They didn't think about that grave out there at Wounded Knee and what it meant in the history of our people. They were thinking about AIM and how they could embarrass us or, you know, stop us cold or initiate some kind of a law enforcement, uh, should we say like, a, you know, when they suspend your rights, you know, that uh, martial law type of situation. But instead, we went right through town. So we got to one at knee. No one was there. There's a trading post there. And so we went up to the church. And then some people said, well, if we're going to... And then we made a decision, well, we're going to stay here until... We said, let's have a meeting. And it was kind of... At first, we weren't thinking of staying there, like I said, and... The chiefs came, and that was another thing that was so powerful spiritually because the elderly people, the men, the women, the children, they were all part of this caravan. So when we got to Wounded Knee, we went up to the church, you know, one of the greatest enemies of Indian people, and we ended up meeting in the basement of this church. And it was there that the elders, you know, they said, we're here in Wounded Knee, and the tribal government, they're not really our enemy. They're our people. Our enemy is the United States government. And if we're going to stay here at Wounded Knee, it's going to be half behalf of the 1868 Fort Laramie Treaty. Because that's who is the real enemy, is the United States. And if they keep us fighting each other, we'll never get anywhere. And so the wisdom of those elders to change that situation, which could have been a BIA against AIM, aim against federal marshal, they changed it. So the whole politics changed in that moment of the chief fool's crow and them making that decision that they're not our enemy, they're our people. To remember this grave and who killed him, it wasn't the VIA police, it was the United States. So we were right on the edge of that grave was the, was the church. So I'm a Vietnam veteran, man, we start. And then all of a sudden, we're just coming out of the meeting, some shots ring out. And what had happened was some people went down to the store, and they were going to get some gasoline and some food supplies, and here the store was closed. But the VIA cops were coming in, they thought the people was trying to rob the store, so they opened up, tried to scare people, shooting over their heads, but other people who saw it, thought the cops were shooting at our people. So then, that's when things took a turn. 